Hi, I'm going to say something about my book, Alternative Collects, Prayers to a Disruptive and Compassionate God. Why did I write it, people ask me. Well, I didn't really intend to, although that's what most authors say about their books, very modestly, of course. But prayer is a difficult and awkward business. I think it's a bit like trying to get on with your family, really. Some bits are fine, and other bits are a nightmare. Prayer for me has always been a struggle, an arduous journey. But there have been certain things that have happened, and people I've met, that have helped me along the way, and I journey in a ragged sort of way still today. One of them was when a colleague told me about the book by Walter Brueggemann, called Ode to Heaven, Rooted in Earth. Walter Brueggemann is one of the greatest living Old Testament theologians, now in his 80s and still going strong. Whenever he gave a lecture, he would have a prayer before he started that was based in the passage or passages they were going to study that particular morning or afternoon. And these prayers, I think, are marvellous, and, and a number of them are in this book here. They're well-crafted, they're biblically and theologically intelligent, they're heartfelt, they're passionate, and they're political. Let me read one to you. Um, this is the prayer that he read at the beginning of a lecture on 1 Samuel chapter 5. When the Ark of God was pinched by the Philistines and taken to Ashdod and caused them all sorts of trouble and bother, it's a proper curse to them. And wherever they took it, there was bother and difficulty. And at the same time, the Israelites were distressed because the Ark of God had been stolen. This is the prayer of that particular day before that particular lecture. It's called Stunned by the Morning. The night of defeat is long and still and unbearable. We know the nights and our sisters and brothers who are cold and hungry and brutalised know them better than we do. And you also know the night in Ashdod and in a trillion other times. How is it with, how is it with you in the night? We do not know. Perhaps it is like it is with us. We, with the Philistines, are stunned by the morning. Stunned to find our pet projects toppled. Stunned to find our favourite gods failed. Stunned to find our managed hopes defeated. Then, you in the morning. You only. You in splendour. You in glory. You in power. This day we dazzle at your glory in the midst of our long night. Move in your glory this day in the midst of our many nights. Bring us to your day, to your new day, your third day. Amen. There are plenty more here and I do recommend this book to you. Um, but that book really got me started on thinking, well, this is a great way to pray and got me writing my own prayers, which I wrote for personal use, uh, also for prayers in church, intercessions. And two, at the end of every talk or sermon that I gave, I would craft a prayer which summed up the essence of the message of that particular sermon, rather than just giving a prayer off the cuff to try and tidy up having given a talk. Over the years, I wrote quite a lot of prayers, and many of them fitted into the pattern of the common lectionary. And people seem to like them and appreciate them. So it's a natural step for me to fill in the gaps and cover the whole of the revised common lectionary. And then I asked my publisher, Sacristy Press, if they were interested in publishing them. And yes, they said they would. They're a wonderful little publishing house based up in Durham. Do look at their website. Links are below. The Collects, well, I think I, as a lot of other people, 
have a bit of a love-hate relationship with them. I think they're great for holding me to the church's year and the pattern of the seasons that we go through. But I do feel they rather, they rather state the obvious and they request the obvious. And I just felt I needed something fresher. My guess was other people did as well. It is my hope that in uh, these alternative collects, people will find them more pithy and gritty, using a minimum of religious language, that they're heartfelt and honest, honest about our frustrations with God, and our, but also our delights, honest about our doubts, but to owning up to the rather good surprises there are too uh, throughout our Christian journey. I've tried to make them so they follow a bit more of the tradition of the Old Testament Psalms and prophet prayers, as well as the book is subtitled Prayers to a Disruptive and Compassionate God. I hope maybe they in some way disturb us as well as comfort us. Because it seems to me that God has to undo stuff in us before he can rebuild us in a new way. Let me read to you uh, the colic for the first Sunday in Lent, uh, year B. O oh God of deserted and wild terrains, we know that if we do not enter the wilderness, you will surely allow hard and arid experiences to come to us. Show us what can only be understood in fierce landscapes. Expose the futility of our perceived goodness and our patronising acts of charity. Keep us attentive to you and to our true selves until we have been stripped of all that keeps us from you, from others and from ourselves during the usual routines of life outside the desert. Amen. Well, there are 200 such prayers in here, with a short essay beginning and end of the book. If you want to know more or want to purchase a copy, do see the link below or at the end of this video, and uh, you can go to the uh, Sacristy Press website and find details there. Many thanks for watching this video.